Uh, hi class, today actually Dr. Swaminath must have told you that uh, we had exchanged classes so I'll be here on today, I'll be here today and also on the Saturday. Uh, probably today's class I'll finish off Ace of Eggers because there's only two parts left that is uh, uh, your uh, pre-malignant lesions and uh, also malignancy of the esophagus. Uh, esophageal malignancy is very 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 important probably it is not so often asked in your theory but it is a four mark stock question and Barrett's esophagus along with Plummer Wilson syndrome. Plummer Wilson syndrome is again asked in uh, medicine then surgery. I will still try to cover it up. There is hardly anything it is a short notes. Plummer Wilson syndrome and Plummer Wilson syndrome has a very classical entrance question so does uh, Barrett's esophagus. Um, CA esophagus uh, staging is little complicated because usually uh, the upper thirds upper two thirds are squamous cell carcinoma and the lower one third is uh, adenocarcinoma so the questioning is uh, not usually asked for uh, you uh, but it is for post graduation post graduation entrance esophageal ca is a stock question in itself so without wasting much time i'd start barrett's esophagus Barrett's esophagus, you have to remember that why does it come and where does it come? Barrett's esophagus comes when there is lot of reflux esophagitis, that is acid coming, acid getting refluxed into your esophagus. So what is happening? The body of the esophagus at the lower end is not what it should be like a stomach, it is more for esophagus okay so when this acid is coming to get acclimatized to acid okay to get acclimatized to acid the squamous cell a layer will get converted to columnar epithelium there is a metaplastic change metaplastic change of normal squamous to intestinal type columnar epithelium in response to GERD is nothing but nothing but your Barrett's esophagus. So what? This irritation and your body is trying to get acclimatized to this particular con uh, concept of this acid reflux into the esophagus. So acid reflux is not a thing that will leave you. So you have to be very 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 careful. And what is the distinct feature or the hallmark of Barrett's esophagus. In Barrett's esophagus you find that you find intestinal type of goblet cells. Intestinal type of goblet cells. This basically predisposes to adenocarcinoma within 2 cm range from the junction of squamocolumnar junction. That is the most common site, squamocolumnar junction. It is where the squamous layer is getting converted to adenocarcinoma, that is the intestinal type of columnar epithelium. That is where at the junction 2 cm above okay within 2 centimeters above or below is where the most common site of adenocarcinoma of the esophagus if adenocarcinoma of the esophagus now what are the complications of Barrett's esophagus Barrett's esophagus will form peptic ulceration in the esophagus will form a stricture and lately a cancer lately a cancer so it is a metaplastic change from squamous to columnar and its salient feature is presence of goblet cells intestinal goblet cells then what happens you should remember there is a 40 fold 40 fold increase in because of Barrett's esophagus 40 40 uh, 40 times or 40 folds there is increased risk of adenocarcinoma adenocarcinoma and then you should know what are the types of Barrett's 
esophagus. There are two types of Barrett's esophagus. One is classical Barrett's esophagus wherein you have a 3 centimeter or more columnar epithelium in the esophagus. Whereas there is short segment, there is short segment Barrett's esophagus which is less than 3 centimeters or 3 centimeters of columnar epithelium with cardiac that is cardiac esophageal cardiac junction cardiac metaplasia this is what is a common common feature so how do you go about how do you go about by a patient coming to you with barrett's esophagus when you see a patient with barrett's esophagus you have to you have to remember you have to do a endoscopy endoscopy is gold standard investigation of choice for barrett's esophagus and then whenever you see barrett's esophagus it is imperative that is it, it, it is almost uh, regarded that you have to take biopsy and this biopsy that you take is basically called as Seattle biopsy Seattle biopsy you take uh, four quadrants uh, layer for biopsy with the entire length and sparing only one centimeter more than one centimeter between each of it so four quadrant biopsy four quadrant biopsy you have to take one centimeter apart and should be full length okay then you have to grade this Barrett's esophagus and this is called as prox criteria prox criteria in prox criteria it is called as proxy and prog m proxy and prog m in proxy the whole c means circumferential okay circumferential the total circumference of the esophagus getting turned into uh, Barrett's esophagus or metaplasia and then you have Prag M, where is only proximal extent of metaplasia is seen in this. So, columnar, columnar involvement, okay, distal 2 centimeters in circumferential, in circumferential uh, fashion plus tongue of metaplasia extend 5 centimeters above the gastroesophageal junction. This is what you should understand and based on this, based on this, your treatment goes and then you go for treatment of eso uh, Barrett's esophagus. When Barrett's esophagus is simple Barrett's esophagus, you can try all the same treatment as we have discussed for uh, reflux esophagitis like avoiding a sleep then nissen's fund application then you give proton pump inhibitors all these you try but at the end of the day once you see barrett's esophagus and it's almost increasing your cancer potential by 40 times 40 times it is imperative for you to do or conduct endoscopy regularly with barrett's esophagus Okay, if, if Barrett's esophagus, regular follow-up with biopsy is a must. In the absence of any dysplasia on, on, on your endoscopy, if there is no, uh, if there is no dysplasia, okay, Dis if there is no dysplasia, you can check with the patient every two yearly. Okay, every two years you can ask the patient to get checked for uh, endoscopy plus biopsy. If there is low grade dysplasia, if there is low grade dysplasia, you will do a annual surveillance. Annual surveillance is every year you perform, every year you perform, uh, an, I mean, endoscopy plus biopsy on this patient. And if you see, and if you see high grade dysplasia, subtotal esophagectomy or subtotal esophagectomy or vagal sparing esophagectomy or laser ablation these are the treatment of choices that you should make subtotal esophagectomy or vagal sparing esophagectomy or laser ablation laser ablation uh, what are the methods that you're going to follow one is laser ablation 
argon plasma argon plasma what is argon it's a inert gas argon is an inert gas there is a laser that has plasma ablation then you do a photodynamic therapy then you do a endoscopic mucosal resection argon ablation endoscopic mucosal resection you do a laser ablation and a photodynamic therapy this is what you do with barrett's esophagus that is one set of one set of uh, uh, this thing, uh, Barrett's esophagus, and then what is another? There is another thing that is Plummer Wilson syndrome. Mostly, you must have read in ENT. Mostly, you will have read it in your uh, pathology. You will have read it in uh, iron deficiency anemia in your uh, uh, what do you call medicine okay so now what is exactly is plummer wilson syndrome it is basically a post cricoid web post cricoid web usually seen in people with iron deficiency anemia here there is a paradox you have to understand what it is uh, iron deficiency anemia is causing this uh, plummer wilson syndrome or plummer wilson syndrome web is causing iron deficiency anemia we do not know we do not clearly know no book mentions it this is the way that it is happening so which of it is causing uh, 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 post cricoid web we do not know okay so what happens here the patient will have dysphagia because of the web dysphagia because of the web I told you iron deficiency anemia because of iron deficiency anemia nothing is going in he's developing uh, nothing because of web he's developing iron deficiency anemia as he's not able to eat anything or we don't know if iron deficiency anemia itself is causing the web itself is causing the web which is further deteriorating and causing iron deficiency anemia and other features of iron deficiency anemia like atrophic glossitis atrophic glossitis and coilonychia that is spooning of your nails spooning of your nails that is what are the features of plummer wilson syndrome you see adenocarcinoma in barrett's esophagus whereas it is squamous cell carcinoma in uh, achalasia cardia and plummer wilson syndrome these two are important important questions that adenocarcinoma there and squamous cell carcinoma here both of them are entrance questions to you then what happens uh, most common cause of dysphagia cervical post cricoid web this you have to remember syndrome more commonly seen in middle aged women without teeth I don't know why but it is seen in women without teeth then it's a premalignant lesion about 10% of these people will progress to squamous cell carcinoma they will progress to squamous cell carcinoma named as sideropenic dysplasia it is called as sideropenic dysplasia because the dysphagia is uh, seen with iron deficiency anemia so how do you treat endoscopic finding and how do you treat you do a dilatation or a laser lysis of the web laser lysis of the web then we'll move on to the tumors or mostly uh, tumors of the esophagus. I already discussed about uh, leomyoma, you already know, and then Barrett's esophagus, Plummer Wilson syndrome. These are pre malignant lesions. Then there is something called as malignancy of the esophagus. Squamous cell carcinoma, um, sorry, uh, malignancy of the esophagus are basically of two types squamous cell carcinoma and basal, uh, sorry, and adenocarcinoma. In squamous cell carcinoma, it is most common in men, and always it is the middle third of esophagus middle third of not always most of the times it is middle third of esophagus upper third of the esophagus also develops squamous cell carcinoma and most common site of esophageal cancer i already told you is middle third of uh, middle third of the esophagus in india as well as worldwide as well as worldwide most common malignant tumors in the whites or western countries is lower esophagus and that is adenocarcinoma adenocarcinoma most common type of dysphagia which happens uh, a most common symptom of uh, ca esophagus is dysphagia seen in 60 percent of uh, individuals and and 
because an esophage an esophageal dysphagia in ca esophagus develops only after two thirds involvement of the circumference two thirds involvement of the circumference so it is a late symptom it is a late symptom that's the reason whenever a dys dysphagia patient comes to a, a patient comes to you with dysphagia and you suspecting uh, esophageal carcinoma already it is a advanced cancer advanced cancer dysphagia is rapidly progressive for both solids and then liquids. First it is for solids then liquids. In Ecclesia cardia it's exactly the opposite. Initially it is for the liquids followed by solids. Basically in Ecclesia cardia both of them have, both of them have uh, both the uh, dysphagia is for both but as liquids cannot stay for long as solids that's the reason liquids are uh, morbid or liquids are not really taken by the patients that's the reason it is important now what are the uh, uh, what are the uh, predisposing factors predisposing factors for uh, carcinoma of the esophagus first I'll talk four important uh, things that are reasons for development of adenocarcinoma as these are four or five odd you have to make a separate heading whereas the squamous cell carcinoma has a lot more lot more of predisposing factors that's the reason the five predisposing factors for adenocarcinoma of the esophagus are number one Barrett's esophagus I already told you obesity obesity scleroderma scleroderma uh, then high protein and fat diet high protein and fat diet that is a non-vegetarian food uh, with lot of fried uh, food actually then smoking then smoking these are the five important reasons for adenocarcinoma of the esophagus then we'll move on to the squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus as i told you plumber wilson syndrome achalasia cardia alcohol cigarette cigarette is both there here and here and uh, adenocarcinoma then uh, phys uh, physical agents like hot tea lye injection that is a dye lye injection and radiation strictures somebody who underwent radiation and this forms stricture of the esophagus those develop squamous cell carcinoma plumber wilson syndrome i said then there is something called as tylosis uh, tylosis palmaris l plantaris this is a fungal infection okay tylosis palmaris et plantaris this is a this is a fungal infection then dietary deficiency of zinc molybdenum and vitamin a uh, dietary deficiency of zinc molybdenum and vitamin a uh, then you have uh, already i told you uh, about achalasia cardia and then i told and then you should remember celiac Sprue, celiac sprue. These are the these are the places what cause a patient or a person to develop uh, to develop esophageal cancer. Esophageal cancer. Esophageal cancer. So, what is the most common variety of esophageal cancer in the world? It is in India and the world is squamous cell carcinoma, but in the Western countries it is uh, adenocarcinoma. Uh, men are more commonly affected in esophageal cancer. Plummer Wilson syndrome carries about 10% risk and uh, Barrett's esophagus about 40 fold increase in chances of developing malignancy. malignancy. Now what are the clinical features of esophagus, esophageal cancer? Esophageal cancer as I told you as the 60% of the lumen to be involved or the two-thirds of the lumen with the structurous growth of esophageal cancer when present the patient will have dysphagia. Patient will have dysphagia and Dysphagia is a sign of advanced disease. Dysphagia is a sign of, not always, is, an, is a sign of advanced disease. Then you have about weight loss. Patient isn't eating anything because of dysphagia, which means he's going to lose weight, as well as because of the interleukin-6 cytokines, which also uh, cause cancer cachexia. That's the reason the patient will develop uh, loss of weight and loss of appetite. Hoarseness of voice is a very, 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 very important finding. Why? Because whenever there is hoarseness of voice, there is recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement. And when you suspect recurrent laryngeal involvement, it indicates that the patient is in a fairly advanced cancer. The patient is suffering from a fairly advanced cancer. 
okay fairly advanced cancer then what you do signs of advanced malignancy include as i already told you as i already told you it is uh, patient suffering from uh, uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy and Horner's syndrome and Horner's syndrome if there is if the patient has chronic spinal pain which means it must have spread to the plexus of the uh, vertebral column and if the patient has a diaphragmatic paralysis as the phrenic nerve passes the long course it is already involved the phrenic nerve and the phrenic nerve causing diaphragmatic diaphragmatic palsy these are all signs of all signs of uh, advanced disease and the lymph nodal spread i already told you is so different because lamina propria contains uh, lymphatics as well as the sub uh, mucosal lymphatics most common spread because any squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, they go to the lymph nodes. That is a feature. So, most common mode of spread is lymph node. Uh, lymphatic spread is through the sub mucous lymphatics. This is an important bit. Subcutaneous lymphatics. Predominant spread of tumor via lymphatics to more uh, to the caudal, that is down, then up. It won't go up as common as it goes down but the spread can be longer than the macroscopic involvement of the margin so that's the reason whenever you're doing surgery whenever you're doing esophagectomy you take a 10 centimeter margin up and a 5 centimeter margin below 5 centimeter margin below 10 centimeters up because we exactly the macroscopic view it's more than the macroscopic view because the subcutaneous uh, submucous layer has such long uh, uh, lymphatic system that it must have already spread to the higher region so we take a 10 centimeters from what we see 10 centimeters up and 5 centimeters margin below below the lymph node spread is longitudinal and it is not segmental so just keeps on spreading whereas in your uh, uh, whole of the GIT the malignancy is usually segmental is usually segmental in esophage in esophageal cancer it is basically longitudinal or longitudinal spread so it's continuously vertically spread so we take a margin 10 centimeters above and 5 centimeters below 10 centimeters above and 5 centimeters below uh, then there is something called a C words classification please remember a classification for tumors in OG junction that is esophageal gastric junction the mostly adenocarcinomas it is of three types it is of three types the adenocarcinoma rising in OG junction with extension of 5 centimeters and uh, above and 5 centimeters below the epicenter and the are the epicenter 5 centimeter above and 5 centimeter below are the epicenter are the epicenter then how do you uh, check how do you check uh, I mean anatomical landmarks of the use of Vegas when you put a endoscope and, uh, and but when you put a endoscope cervical esophagus upper thoracic esophagus middle thoracic esophagus and lower thoracic esophagus why i tell you um, i'll be talking about it when i do when you when i talk to you about endoscopic ultrasound why is important so upper cervical uh, upper thora uh, cervical upper thoracic esophagus middle thoracic esophagus and lower thoracic esophagus up uh, the cervical esophagus is 15 to 20 centimeters from your incisor incisor upper incisor then 20 to 25 centimeters uh, i mean where, where does this 15 to 20 meters uh, 20 centimeters where does it uh, meet hypopharynx to the thoracic inlet to the thoracic inlet or it is the sternal notch that is 25 uh, 15 to 20 centimeters from your esophagus sternal notch sternal notch then 15 to 20 uh, 20 to 25 centimeters it is from the thoracic inlet that is your uh, sternal notch the sternal notch to the azygous vein to the azygous vein then middle thoracic is 25 to 30 centimeters from the upper incisor and it is coming from as it, 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 it is from azygous vein to the inferior pulmonary vein to 
to the inferior pulmonary vein then lower thoracic is more than 30 centimeters and inferior pulmonary vein to the gastroesophageal junction gastroesophageal junction then we will stage the uh, then we will stage the uh, uh, cervical uh, then we'll stage the esophageal cancer so first you should remember TIA TIA is the first TIA T1 T1A in T1A it is only the muscularis mucosa the mucosa early on the mucosal phase T1B is submucosa T1B is submucosa T2 is involvement of the muscularis propria T3 is involvement of the adventitia then there is T4A which means resectable part of adjacent organ involvement of the esophageal cancer T4A and T4B is unresectable unresectable and it has already uh, reached the trachea bronchus iota and vertebra and vertebra and nodal staging N1 is 1 to 2 nodes N2 is Two to uh, three to six nodes, and anything above seven nodes is N3. N3. Then you have M1 distant metastasis. Distant metastasis. Uh, now, how do you stage? Basically, it's esophageal. Esophageal cancer is both uh, squamous cell carcinoma as well as um, distant, uh, as well as your uh, adenocarcinoma so first we will discuss about i uh, not discuss I'll, I'll put it as a st i'll put it as a stage to you uh, number one when it is zero stage or high grade dysplasia of barrett's esophagus it is tis with grade one dysplasia and in squamous cell also it is TIS same it is same stage 0 it is stage 0 then stage 1 is again divided into 1A 1B 2A is divided 2 is divided into 2A 2B 3A is divided into 3A B C and stage 4 is any of the T's any of the N M1 in for both so stage 4 is any T any nodal status M1 is stage 4 in esophageal cancer or any other cancer for that it's only not seen in uh, your uh, lower GI tract malignancies lower GI tract malignancies then 1A is uh, you have to have you have to have uh, one that is uh, T1, T1, I already told you what is T1, muscularis mucosa involvement, T1, N0, M0, grade, metaplasia is, grade of dysplasia is 1 to 2, 1 to 2, it holds the same, it holds the same to squamous cell carcinoma, but its grade is only 1, not 1 to 2, 1 to 2 in adenocarcinoma and 1 in, 1 in, uh, squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma then you have 1b stage 1b t1 and t2 are in are accepted uh, t1 and t2 are 1b features whereas in squamous cell carcinoma t1 and 2 to 3 2 to 3 also are accepted in 1b okay no nodes to be involved no nodes to be involved 1b the grade of dysplasia is 3 in squamous cell carcinoma it is 2 to 3 it is 2 to 3 when you have t2 when you have t2 involvement 1 to 1 to 2 second 1 to 2 grade of your barrett's esophagus that is that is also involved then 2a t2 n0 m0 and grade 3 okay Squam in squamous cell carcinoma it is 2 to 3 2 to 3 not just 2 2 to 3 2 to 3 no nodal involvement no nodal involvement no nodal involvement um, then 2b then 2b 2a 2b uh, 3 t3 okay t3 
T3, T1 to T3, N0, M0. It is 2 to 3, N0, M0 for squamous cell carcinoma. Then uh, 2B also has a single nodal involvement that is stay grade 1 lymph nodal involvement. Then T1 to 2. Okay, T1 to 2 with the nodal involvement will be uh, stage 2B. Whereas in squamous cell carcinoma, it is uh, 1 to 2. Okay, 1 to 2. 1 nodal involvement. Then 3A. T1 to 2. Okay, T1 to 2. T3 and 4A. Okay, with, when, when it is T1 to 2, T1 to 2, you should have nodal 2 n2 is 3 to 6 nodes 3 to 6 nodes and 3a in squamous cell carcinoma is uh, t1 to 2 with single uh, with two nodal involvement that is 3 to uh, 2 to 6 3 to 6 lymph node involvement then uh, 3a uh, in adenocarcinoma t3 n1 T3, N1, M0. The same thing for squamous cell carcinoma. T3, N1, M0. Then, locally advanced cancer, T4A. T4A with no nodal involvement will hold good for both adenocarcinoma and the squamous cell carcinoma. The squamous cell carcinoma and the adenocarcinoma features only differ in 2A, 2B and uh, 1B, 2A and 2B. These are the places where they differ. Rest of the things they are almost same. <coughs> 3b when you have the tumor at t3 n2 n2 n1 is only acceptable okay t3 n1 is 3a t3 n2 uh, n2 that is 3 to 6 nodes n2 is classified in 3b 3b the same thing is in squamous cell carcinoma also then you have 3c wherein you have t4a 1 to 2 lymph nodal staging groups and zero metastasis 3c is 4b okay 4b any of the nodal status any of the nodal status the same thing holds to squamous cell carcinoma also then you have uh, any uh, t nodal stage 3 even if it is 1t t1 and n0 okay n0 uh, n3 sorry not n0 n3 it means it is 3c it is n e t with one with third and three that is n3 n3 is seven and greater lymph nodes if that is there it is considered as 3c 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 so this is how you stage so once you stage you have to go for treatment you have to go for treatment how do you treat a patient of uh, sorry before doing that you have to investigate the patient for and uh, esophageal cancer nodal status how do you know and how do you basically know uh, staging how do you stage the staging of both squamous uh, sorry uh, ca stomach as well as esophagus is with endoscopic biopsy endoscopic biopsy for lymph node status it is endoscopic usg for both esophagus as well as the stomach as well as the stomach for staging the lymph nodes you will do a endoscopic ultrasonogram and you will do a endoscopic okay you will do a endoscopic biopsy for uh, for your uh, uh, investigation biopsy is investigation whereas for the nodal status it is endoscopic ultrasonogram PET scan is used as an additional tool to diagnose distant metastasis PET scan PET scan is used for uh, used as an additional tool to know for the metastasis bronchoscopy is must for tumors of the upper esophagus and the middle esophagus bronchoscopy 
is must upper one third and middle one third tumors of the esophagus will definitely will definitely need a bronchoscopy in bronchoscopy and then there is speciality of your endoscopic ultrasound endoscopic ultrasound when you check when you check when you put an endoscopic ultrasound into the esophagus, uh, usually how are the layers seen? The first mucosal layer is hyperechoic. Submucosa is hypoechoic. Uh, muscularis mucosa is hyperechoic. And adventitia is hypoechoic. Okay? So, there are two layers. <laughs> There are two, uh, there are two uh, layers that are hypoechoic. Then most of the malignancies are hypoechoic. How do you defend? How do you differentiate from a hypoechoic lesion of this? When a hyperechoic mucosa or the adventitia has hypoechoic nodule, it indicates malignancy. But a hypoechoic submucosa and uh, hypoechoic adventitia, if they have uh, tumors, uh, how do you differentiate? Then you should know how the features are there. Hypoechoic nodule. There should be a nodule. It should be a nodule, circumscribed nodule or a diffuse nodule uh, it should have a well-defined border it should have a well-defined border then you have a round shape i mean it should it should have a round shape and ultimately the nodule should be greater than one centimeter greater than one centimeter will clinch the diagnosis will clinch the diagnosis will clinch the diagnosis then how do you treat a patient who has come to you with esophageal cancer esophageal cancer stage one two you have to operate and it is stage three you give them chemo i mean uh, uh, you give them new adjuvant chemo radiation therapy followed by surgery stage four you can do nothing you should give the patient a palliative care palliative Okay. Now, how do you treat? The treatment of CA esophagus is multimodality treatment. It is multimodality treatment, combined surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Once what I wish to tell you something. Most of the cancers of the GI tract are adenocarcinoma. Okay. And adenocarcinoma does is a radioresistant tumor. Please remember. Okay. This is not an entrance bit. The only adenocarcinoma, okay, the only adenocarcinoma that is radiosensitive is your rectal malignancy. Rectal adenocarcinoma is radiosensitive. So you subject the patient with rectal adenocarcinoma to radiation. The rest, rest of the GI tract, rest of the GI tract, the adenocarcinoma will not have any effect of if any effect whatsoever for radiation therapy okay radiation therapy is more squamous cell carcinoma especially in uh, stage one of buccal cavity stage one tumors of the cervix squamous cell carcinoma radiation is the only treatment of choice you don't even give the patient chemotherapy you don't even give the patient chemotherapy so squamous cell carcinoma is radio sensitive adenocarcinoma is radio resistant but rectal adenocarcinoma is radio sensitive rectal adenocarcinoma is radio sensitive okay is that clear is that clear uh, okay how do you treat multimodality approach with combined surgery chemotherapy and radiotherapy surgery stays the main mode main mode of treatment surgery stays the main mode of treatment no whenever that is the tumor is t1a okay endoscopic submucosal resection is the treatment of choice if it is t1a that is only involving the muscularis mucosa then T1A tumor, submucosal endoscopic resection is the treatment of choice. Locally advanced cancer, you first give radiotherapy, then you do a chemotherapy followed by surgery. If the if the uh, if the tumors are inoperable, inoperable, you will just manage with palliation. With palliation. Now there are surgical options. There are three 
surgical options available to us okay three surgical options available to us for esophageal malignancies not one number one is ivory lewis number one is ivory lewis it is a two-staged procedure two-staged procedure then you have mackey wands okay mackey wands uh, 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 esophagectomy which it's, it's basically three-staged procedure and then there is transhiatal esophagectomy or Oringer's esophagectomy. Oringer's procedure, Mackey Wands procedure. Oringer's procedure is a two stage procedure. Ivory Lewis is a two stage procedure. Mackey Wands is a three stage procedure. Okay, these are uh, basically for entrance. These are not for the theory point of view, but these are for. These are for uh, entrance point of view in ivory lewis we do endos we do anastomosis in the uh, mediastinum okay though the chances of leak are less but when the leak is there it is near fatal it is near fatal in ivory lewis the the uh, the and anastomosis is happening in the mediastinum so leak can go into pericardium can go into the uh, lungs and that can cause I mean, I mean the chances of the patient's survival are rare okay it is basically subtotal esophagectomy subtotal esophagectomy leak percentages are low but when it leaks the mortality is quite high quite high then there is total esophagectomy that is mackey wands procedure the mackey wands procedure uh, three incisions one on the abdomen one on the thorax and one on the neck cervical these are the three incisions you do a neck anastomosis you do a neck anastomosis and neck anastomosis the chances of leak are high but the chances of leak are high but the contamination in the mediastinum does not occur even if it leaks the patient survives even if it leaks uh, the patient survives then there is oringus procedure then there is oringus procedure this is basically two incisions one is the thorax and one is then that one is one on the abdomen anastomosis is neck anastomosis mortality is less compared to the thorax but unfortunately in uh, oringus procedure the problem is nodal clearance is not there so post operatively you have to subject the patient to radiation therapy radiation therapy it is a must it, it is a must in oringus procedure for the other two you don't have to if the nodes are not involved in the nodes if the nodes are not involved in mackey wands and ivory lewis you don't have to do any Thing. okay whereas if you are doing the oringus procedure you have to subject because squamous cell carcinoma most of the times anastomosis is up uh, uh, then uh, most of the times it is up so you don't have to squamous cell carcinoma so can squamous cell carcinoma is radio sensitive you subject the patient to radiation therapy in oringus procedure in oringus procedure in ivory lewis the anastomosis is taking place in the mediastinum leak will is near fatal whereas in uh, mackey wants it's totally suffragectomy anastomosis is here but it is a cumbersome three three stage procedure cumbersome uh, morbidity is quite high during the surgery during the surgery uh, but it gives a good cure good cure good cure then when you have palliation okay what are the conduits that you can use because you are doing a total esophagectomy what are the conduits you want to use for esophagus what are the conduits you want to use for the esophagus uh, stomach is the main conduit for esophageal cancers then for a short segment you can use a jejunum okay for a short segment you can use jejunum and uh, for a stricture that is caused because of uh, corrosive poisoning that is acid and alkali the treatment of choice is the treatment of choice is uh, the treatment of choice is a colon pull the transverse colon is split up into the uh, esophageal column and thereby uh, doing this so what are the chemotherapeutic agents that you use for uh, use for CA esophagus that is uh, 
cisplatinum and 5 fluoro uracil is the chemo therapeutic agents of choice and once in once in once the staging becomes 4 and uh, the tumor is inoperable then you will put a SME stent that is self expanding metallic stent self expanding self expanding metallic stent is put so that you will have easy passage of food and that that does, does not spread but this will give the life of about three months to the patient followed which the patient would die of other complications of uh, esophageal malignancy especially involving a big vessel or the lungs or the bronchus whatever so the patient will ultimately die esophageal cancer carries a very 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 bad prognosis because by the time you see it must have already split to the lymph nodes it is six months and uh, usually five years survival rate is about 40 percent in best case scenario so uh, esophageal cancer is dangerous avoid all those things and take a lot of vitamin C uh, I mean no, vitamin C is because uh, it, it, it is, it is uh, basically hmm, yeah self-expanding metallic stent SMEs this 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 was a question that was asked to me in my exam for easy in my uh, surgery and I mean not surgery entrance in the entrance I wrote after my MBBS to get MS seat so self-expanding metallic stent okay prevention of cancer is always better so you have to follow now if anybody has any questions you can ask me Only 10 people are watching, so 9 actually. So hardly anybody must have any questions. And I'll close for today. Or I'll give you another 1 or 2 minutes and then close. Anybody has any questions to ask? So all of you are brilliant, hopefully your brilliance will pay off. If the esophagus has to be removed because of the cancer, so the patient has to live the rest of his life with a gastric tube. Yes, he has to live with a gastric tube. There is nothing artificial that we can put. It's not just a gastric tube. If the stomach is involved in strictures, he may have to live it with, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, colon and the colon pool the patient has to live with halitosis bad smell because of uh, intestine i mean uh, lower intestinal uh, large intestinal flora and fauna so it is basically very difficult uh, uh, but he has to live and usually it is coming to people who are above 60 so the survival rate is for five years ten years it's acceptable if the patient can live a qualitative life Uh, I, I mean, I don't know why it is, uh, why the rectal adenocarcinoma is sensitive to uh, 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 sensitive to radiation, but they say the genetics of rectal adenocarcinoma is more towards squamous cell carcinoma because next is anus, where anus is usually uh, squamous cell carcinoma that comes to the anus. So maybe there is a mixture of these things. That is the reason the uh, the rectal adenocarcinoma is radio sensitive. But there is no, it's not clearly till now understood why rectal adenocarcinoma basically is radio sensitive.
anyone else has got a question and it is not a uh, vandana it is not gastric tube okay it's not gastric tube it is a gastric conduit you're making the stomach into resemens post operatively how are the additions treated sir uh, see in in the thorax and the esophageal this thing the additions are not so high and uh, these additions are not clearly causing a lot of problem unless uh, un, uh, more additions are causing problem where intestines are there that is where additions are causing problem as they can go into an obstruction okay this won't allow the motility of the gut to take place in that particular region and that adhesion can form or this adhesion can allow an intestine to get in and not allow it to get out and that is when it 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 forms intestinal obstruction adhesions are not really a big problem in esophageal cancer it is they are problem when we do a laparotomy when we do a laparotomy for other intestinal uh, problems say for incisional hernia or uh, you did a uh, intestinal obstruction a resection and ostomosis or you have done a gastric bypass whatever but those additions are dangerous because they are in the future going to cause intestinal obstruction but these additions in the thorax are unlikely going to cause uh, such big damage Likita in 1 minute I'll go and you are giving your attendance now Okay any more Shall I say goodbye or any doubts more Fine take care see you all all the very best